In chapter one, we're going to look at an introduction to matter and measurement. So chemistry is the study of the properties and behavior of matter. And matter is anything that has mass and takes up space. Um, so basically it's the physical material of the universe. It's anything like your, your body, air, clothes, any kind of combination of elements is, is what matter is. And a property is any characteristic that allows you to recognize a particular type of matter and distinguish it from other types. So we're going to look at chemical properties, we're going to look at physical properties. Um, and all these properties are really related to the kinds of atoms that the matter contains. So that's what we refer to as composition, as well as the structure, so it's the arrangement of the atoms. So you can classify matter um, a few different ways. So one, you're looking at the physical state, whether it's a solid, liquid, or gas and then also its composition. Is it an element, a compound, or a mixture? Uh, so a lot of this stuff should look familiar. Um, this chapter kind of starts off with a little bit of vocabulary, and then we add in some math at the end. Uh, so a lot of this vocabulary you probably have seen in you know, elementary school. So like, what is a gas? You know, What are the three main phases of matter? You have uh, solid, liquid, and gas. So a gas is something that takes the shape of the container, uh, takes the volume of the container, so it has no fixed volume. You can compress it, so you can kind of squish the molecules together, or you can let them expand and they can get uh, further away from each other. So molecules in a gas are generally far away from each other. If you compress it too much, then you become a liquid. If you compress it even more, then uh, you, can, you can become a solid. Um, so a liquid has a distinct volume that's independent of the container. So suppose you had like a one gallon um, jug of milk or something and you, you poured it into a, a trash can. I don't know why you do that, but suppose you did. You The volume didn't change, right? You had one gallon in the jug, now you have one gallon in the trash. Um, but the shape of it will change, right? The shape of that liquid will change. Um, it depends on the shape of the container. So liquids will always take the shape of the container, but their volume is um, independent of the container. So they have fixed volume, um, but, but their shape can change. And then solids have a definite shape and a definite volume. Uh, so solids and liquids can be um, cannot be compressed to any uh, appreciable extent. Um, they're called condensed phase, uh, condensed states. So you can take a gas and compress it, right? And once you do that, you you become um, a, you know a liquid or a solid. Uh, but and not to any appreciable extent can you really uh, the, the solids are kind of as compressed as they can get. Um, atoms, so oh, this is just pictures of uh, solid, liquid, and gas, and so you can see the molecules in, a, in the gas. Uh, another word for gas is vapor. Um, the molecules are kind of spread out. For liquid, they're a lot closer together. Um, and then a solid, you can see they have kind of like a, a regular repeating structure here. We'll talk about different types of, of solids in chapter 11. So we mentioned atoms before, and atoms are just the building blocks of matter, and each element is made of the same kind of atom. Uh, so here are, you know, here's an, an atoms of an element. This is a picture of atoms of an element. You can see you have just you know, one atom, one singular thing here. Um, if you put two of them together, you have a molecule. And so if they're the same, then this is like a molecule of an element. So this is probably something like um, H2 or Maybe you have some oxygen, diatomic molecules there. Uh, you can also have molecules of a compound. Um, so you have you know, one, one central atom, that's, the, that's one thing, and then you have three of the same atoms all around. They can, you can have a lot of different combinations here. This is a compound because you have two different types of atoms, two different types of elements here. Um, and then here is a mixture of elements and, uh, and a compound. So here are molecules of an element, here it's just the atoms of the element, and then here's a compound. So that's a, that's a mixture. So we're going to go over these terms again. So elements are substances that cannot be broken down into simpler substances. If it's in the periodic table, then it's an element. So I'm, I'm sure you have a favorite element. If you don't, pick a favorite now. Um, compounds are you know, two or more different kinds of elements. Uh, so an element is something like uh, copper. Um, a compound would be something like water. Right? Water has um, hydro is made of hydrogen and oxygen. It's made up of elements, of two different types of elements here. Uh, the law of constant composition, or the law of definite proportions, means that the elemental composition, elemental composition of a compound is always the same. So if you think about water or uh, carbon dioxide, those are both um, compounds. 
uh, what this is really saying is that any sample of water that you have, you're going to have two atoms of hydrogen for every one molecule, or every one atom of oxygen. For carbon dioxide, you have one carbon for every two oxygens. So it's always going to be the same, no matter what type of, uh, no matter what sample of um, of this compound you're looking for. The elemental composition is always going to be the same. Otherwise, it's a different compound. So that you know, CO2 is carbon dioxide, which is different than like CO, right, where you have uh, one one carbon for every one oxygen. These are different uh, compounds because they have a different elemental composition. The law of constant composition just means for every all your all your sample of carbon monoxide, you have one carbon, one oxygen. For for every sample of carbon dioxide, you have one carbon, two oxygens. Now you can also have mixtures. Uh, a mixture is a combination of two or more substances in which each substance retains its chemical identity. So you can have I like to make tea, right? So in tea, you have like sugar and water, basically. And you can add a lot of sugar, or you can have just a little bit of sugar. Uh, but sugar and water is kind of your, your, uh, your, your mixture. And um, you can separate the sugar and the water, and you know, or you can mix them together. The, each, each piece kind of retains its chemical identity. Um, but the composition can vary, right? The varying part is important. So you can add different amounts of the sugar to the water. Uh, but it's still just a, a you know a mixture of of um, sugar water because it's like Kool-Aid. Uh, a pure substance is any matter that has distinct properties and a composition that does not vary. So pure substances are um, you know something like water. Like water is a pure substance. Um, it's yeah, its composition is not going to vary. It's always it's a, it's always going to be the same. Um, we also have homogeneous mixtures, we have heterogeneous mixtures. Homogeneous just means that the composition is the same throughout, and heterogeneous means it um, is going to vary. The composition will vary, vary in texture, appearance. Um, so if you had like a pile of rocks and wood, you can clearly distinguish between the rocks and the wood. Uh, or uh, yeah, right. So now we can use this little flowchart to help us figure out what kind of uh, what kind of matter do we have. How do we classify this matter? If you want to look at water, let's take water and kind of walk through um, where that would be. So water is water uniform throughout? Yes. Yep. So it's uh it's homogeneous, not heterogeneous. Um, so again, just think of pure water. Don't think of you know um, water from the Jersey Shore or something like that. So just think of pure water. Uh, it's a homogeneous mixture. Um, does it have very? Uh, does it have variable composition? Um, no, no. It's 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 the same throughout, and you you can't really vary it. Otherwise, you're adding something else to it. So it's a pure substance. Can it be separated into simpler substances? Yeah. What's water made of? Um, H2O, right? So it can be separated into uh, hydrogen and oxygen. So we would say water is a compound. How about sugar water? We already kind of did sugar water, right? We said sugar water, it's uniform throughout. Sure, it's homogeneous because it's uniform throughout. And does it have variable composition? Can I change the amounts of sugar and water and still end up with sugar water? Yeah, so that's a homogeneous mixture. So I'm gonna put sugar water over here. Awesome. And then a pile of rocks and sticks. So is that uniform throughout? Uh, no, not necessarily. So that would be a heterogeneous mixture. So we'll have like rocks and what do I call it? Wood sticks. Awesome. And the last one is helium. So think of like a helium balloon. Uh, yep, it's homogeneous throughout. Does it have variable composition? No, so it's a pure substance. Can it be separated into simpler substances? No, because helium is an element. So. Helium is an element. So now you should pause this video and try to answer this question. Can you figure out what, um, you know, how to classify white gold? So it says white gold is a mixture of uh, gold and a white element, a white metal, like palladium. Uh, and two samples of white gold are going to differ in the relative amounts of gold and, and palladium. Um, both, both samples are uniform in composition. All right, so how would you classify it? So take a second to uh, pause the video and try to answer that question. So if you if you really did that, <laughs> then you're back. Um, so you have, you know, white gold. So is it uniform throughout? Is white gold uniform throughout? Yeah, so if you have like a, um, 
it's white gold jewelry you can look at it you don't see that it's like it's not like striped where you can see the the white gold and the yellow gold it looks pretty pretty uniform throughout does it have variable composition have you ever seen two pieces of um, jewelry like I have I have two rings and they are both white gold but one is a little bit golder than the other so they do have variable composition you can change the amount of the yellow gold versus the, the white metal that you add so because of that it, it is a homogeneous mixture or a solution um, so a lot of times you think of solution as just being a liquid but this is actually it could be a solid liquid or a gas so white gold is a homogeneous mixture